Okay, so today has been absolutely crazy. We haven't had time to do like any filming. Uh, we woke up, we, were, we thought we were late for our press conference, but it started half an hour later than what we thought. Uh, so we ran almost all the way to um, the forum. And then when we got there, we chilled. We got there some extra time that we didn't think we had. Uh, went to a thing, then we had the panel, this, uh, the panel of the press conference. How did it go? I think it went quite well. I mean, it could have gone better. We got some stupid questions um, that aren't that relevant, but I do think we got the message out that we want the media to report on the crisis and not on us. Mm -hmm. um, and then we <laughs> tried to walk to the uh, strike when we were going to strike, uh, but there was like so much media around us. Can we do a pan? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so now we are trying to go to the city, but journalists are always crazy. So we're just trying to do it. Yeah, no, it's, I keep stepping on people's feet. It's not nice. But it's a good weather. <laughs> yeah. So enjoy the walk. It's very warm. What is the strike? And I was talking to Nicholas and the others that were already at the strike and they said that when we came down the road it looked it was bigger than like the other demonstrations that's been here during the week and that was just the journalists. Uh, so there were way more journalists and cameras than there were actual strikers. Yeah. No. What do you want? Climate justice! When do you want? Now! What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want, want? it? Now! What do we want? Which is kind of crazy. And then we strike for a couple of hours, and now we're here, packing, okay. ready to go, and literally leaving in like five minutes. Yeah. Well, thanks Isabel for this week. Thank you for this week. It's That's been, been crazy. crazy. Hello, it's April again and as you can tell we didn't film a lot on day five of us being at the World Economic Forum, uh, so the Friday, uh, because it was our last day there. And uh, even as we were filming our recap video I was packing all of my stuff last minute. And yeah, it was time for us to leave uh, our crazy week behind and Nicholas's home. After leaving Davos, Luisa, a Swiss climate striker called Linus and I took a night train uh, from Zurich to Berlin where we were going to meet up with a lot more German activists and one of my best friends, Elle, who was the person that dragged me into getting into Fires for Future. The train ride was nice to begin with, we were eating, having fun and laughing at ugly photographs of us that the media had chosen to publish, uh, but then while scrolling on Twitter we found out some really upsetting news and that was that AP had, alongside their article about the press conference, published a photograph where they had cut uh, Vanessa Nakata, a Ugandan climate activist, out of uh, the photograph, which is very upsetting since the rest of us on the panel were white European people. Now, instead of me explaining the situation too much, uh, as I am a white European activist who will never be exposed to this kind of disrespect and oppression, I think it's way better that Vanessa is the person that talks about it. It's wonderful to talk to you again. It's been a long time. <laughs> I know, it's been long. What happened must have been really hurtful. And I just wonder, what were the first thoughts that went through your head, like your first feelings when you saw the photograph without you in it? Well, um, I think that the first thing I remember, of course, I felt heartbroken and I felt like I had wasted my time at the press conference. And I felt like my presence really didn't matter a lot because it was really very uh, depressing to have been with other activists and then for a photo to come out when uh, I can't see myself it was a very hard time for me it was very very frustrating and I thought that it wasn't fair at all because um, of course many people have been trying to get their voices heard I've also been trying as much as possible uh, since I started my activism but then at that point, I was just thinking that um, I have got an opportunity to, to at least uh, reach this stage and be able to talk about what's happening in my country and what, how people in my country are suffering because of climate change. But even I, who has reached that stage, still am pushed to the ground and literally everything that I have, I have brought or everything that I've said is literally erased. So it made me think about the rest of the activists back in Africa and it felt like a very hopeless situation 
situation and that there is no way anyone would listen to them if they even didn't have an opportunity to get to the international stage and i did get that opportunity but still it was you know crushed to the ground so it was a very frustrating moment and it made me just think a lot about uh, how people are suffering and how it's going to be very hard to get solutions for them. Yeah, I think when we saw, when I first saw the photograph, I was on the train on the way back from the World Economic Forum uh, yeah. to uh, yeah the night train. And I think uh, I cried a bit because I saw it first on your Twitter and just the feeling of how unfair everything is just really hit me because I know that I am in such a situation of privilege to be able to be listened to to be living in Europe and to have stages like this and then seeing an image that me and people I respect and people I like and then having a friend cut out of that someone that has such an important voice was so upsetting and yeah I can't even imagine how upsetting it was for you if it made me feel like that. So. yeah it, it was a very it was a very hard time do you think that this is a systemic problem that exists within media that reports about the climate and the climate movements yeah um so um i believe that this is something that has been going on for a while i may have a uh, been the victim that really came out loudest but it is something that has been happening for for very many people because of how the media has continuously presented the climate movement and how it has made the climate movement to be so eurocentric at a time and at a point whereby the activists from maybe the global south feel left out they feel like their voices are not being heard so i was not really uh, very surprised when i saw this happen i just knew it was something that was already being done because i remember at the press conference uh, one of the statements i made i told the media to stop being biased about about how they report uh, the climate issues. So I was really surprised when they actually didn't listen. It didn't come as a shock, but it really disturbed me, I must say. It showed that media doesn't really care much because even if someone reaches the point of telling you not to do what you've been doing and then a news company goes ahead and does exactly that, it really shows how much uh, the activists from the global south or from the African continent have no say when it comes to the climate movement, and it's very depressing. Yeah, I agree. I think what happened was horrible, especially after what you said at the press conference. So do you think that after what happened and that it all went viral, do you think that there were any silver linings, uh, any good consequences from the horrible situation? Well, uh, yes, I must say there were there were some good uh, outcomes from that. Uh, this is mainly that many people have now uh, their eyes set on what happens in Africa, the activists in Africa. It is obvious that now uh, journalists are looking out more for the activists in the African continent so they can be able to tell their stories and... I personally have had quite a number of interviews. So I think uh, it had some positive outcome and it has been able to give a certain sort of exposure to the activists in Africa or in the global south. And it has showed that the stories that they have to say are very important. And it has showed that we need to achieve the environmental justice, especially in these communities that are affected the most. Yeah, I hope that gave a lot more perspective on the situation and I think if you want to learn and see more about uh, how Veneta felt about what happened in Davos and about her activism in general, you can watch uh, a video called People of the Planet on the Fight Future uh, YouTube channel, which I will link. Whew, okay, so that was the World Economic Forum. It was a very, very intense week. I learned so much and it left me with a lot of thoughts that I have not been able to express fully in these videos and I hope that a lot of these things 
lot of the stuff that we've shown you take with a grain of salt and that there are a lot of layers to what we're saying and thinking about a lot of things because it is a very complex situation to be a climate activist and surrounded by so many of these kind of people. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been kind of cool doing this, a very new experience. I think I've learned a lot just by editing and filming these vlogs things as well. So yeah, it's been cool. Bye.